Welcome to the Stateless Codecast. This is episode number seven in our series, Getting Started with Rails 7. So we've been working through the Rails Getting Started guide here, guides.ruby on rails.org uh, for Rails 7.0.0. Uh, we're in this section number seven here, credit where credit is due, grown. Uh, we've gone through showing a single article in the previous episode. We changed the routing so that we have um, the seven uh, rest, restful resources associated with article, but as of yet, the um, create, update, edit, destroy are not yet implemented. So we're going to continue on in the guide to this section on creating a new article. So we've got um, now the, the create of, uh, of CRUD. So um, we're, and you can see kind of, um, to start off here, this is going to be, uh, we're gonna create, do the create action before we do the new action. So this kind of first iteration of create is uh, going to be hard-coded in the um, in the controller here so the title will always be um, dot 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 body dot 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 I might change that to stateless and code or something just to make it a little more interesting but not by much um, and um, after that we'll, we'll go into the new action where you actually create a form that will allow for the user input to be saved into this create method. So as we've been going through this, we've been using a test driven approach. So we're going to go and um, do the um, the post create controller test here. And the first iteration of this is going to be with the uh, the boring hard coded version with no parameters. So we'll go into our articles controller test. I will pause and paste in some code and then we'll look through it. All right, so we've got our test here that should fail on creating the article. We've um, got the, uh, so we're asserting the difference of article.count. Um, you can put a second argument here. So like for destroy, we're gonna do negative one here, uh, but by default, it'll just assume one if you don't specify that second argument. Um, we're doing a post to the article's URL. As of yet, we have no parameters. This is unusual and we'll, we'll fix this later on in the video. And then after that post succeeds, we're going to, um, in this case, there, there's no sense in making an instance variable here. We'll do a local variable, uh, taking article.last being the, the latest one created. Um, we will assert that we have been redirected to the article and then um, noted here the the dot dot dots we're gonna uh, make our title stateless our body equal to code and then finally and I don't know whether the guide does this or not but we'll do it the um, assert that the um, article was successfully created in the flash notice so we'll save that we'll run our test which will fail You see the error here, the action create could not be found in the articles controller. So now we will go and take the create action out of the guide. And place it in the articles controller. And I'm going to make this fail again because I haven't changed the title of the body. So this should at least fail now rather than error. So we made it through. So the article was created. The, um, it, the assert difference on the, uh, the count uh, succeeded. And then the assertion about being redirected properly also succeeded. 
So now we'll just make the title and body conform to what we have in our test. This will now fail on the flash. So flash is nil and we'll fix that by in the controller redirect to article comma notice that there's an optional hash after that as uh, in that redirect to and I can I realize I'm being inconsistent with my single and double quotes here. But we should now have a passing test. So um, there so um, we'll, we'll looking here so the um, talking about new and create the new action instantiates a new article but doesn't save it so it instantiates the article sends that to the new view um, that article will be used to build the form you'll have the, the structure of that object available um, and anything you you could initialize article dot new with a default um, that default will uh, will carry over into your view the um, create action instantiates um, the article with the values from the form um, usually so usually this is article dot new article params um, but then it um, will um, try to save it. If it successfully saves, it will um, take you, redirect you to that article, um, or else it's going to go back and um, re-render the new view with. Um, with a 400 um, error code, which will give you, they'll, you typically in your new view, you'll have, if errors exist on that um, article instance variable that you've got, it will um, display those. And then if not, then they don't show up on the form, but that's what we've, uh, we've got there. Um, the actually, invoking this from the browser is going to be tricky but I think I can do it with curl so I'm going to try to um, to do that I'll pause and get the command queued up and then we'll see whether I'm able to get that working all right so I've got my curl command here so curl we're making it the, the dash v makes it verbose um, the dash capital X there allows you to specify the uh, the verb that you're using by default it's get so we're making this post and then our address is uh, localhost 3000 slash articles which looking at the rails routing is where post goes so we'll try that Invalid authenticity token. So we failed doing that. Let me. So what we're seeing in place is the um, Rails security protection for um, uh, from cross-site scripting. So it's uh, it's failing because I don't have a cross-site scripting. Um, forgery token and just for the purposes of this illustration I'm going to very temporarily never do this in real life in your real app I'm going to throw in skip before action verify authenticity token and 
and save that and now try to rerun my curl post so um, that succeeded and we were redirected so if we go back to articles now we can see we've got title stateless body code we will go back immediately and uh, remove that um, skip before action on the authenticity token so um, the getting that to work correctly with curl is a bit outside of the scope of this getting started guide so um, just a kind of quick demonstration of how to get the create working without the new um, again never use that in your own application um, but it um, kind of just for teaching and demonstration purposes showing that you can hit that create endpoint and um, create an article so uh, continuing on so this is again as noted kind of boring you can't do it via the um, via the browser you um, it, it's always going to be an article with a title of stateless and a body of code so um, that's not going to fly for a real interactive web application so um, um, and then one more thing so noting uh, and this is something that can trip up um, new uh, rails developers typically when you when you save when you perform an action that modifies your database um, typically you're going to redirect so after you save the article you redirect to show that article or you could redirect to the index um, you don't uh, typically render uh, when you successfully uh, complete a database transaction uh, and then uh, this render is kind of staying within the same um, instance there allowing the the the, um, the user to get that uh, new information about the errors or va validations that they uh, they didn't get right the um, if you were to try to render here in um, the successful save situation um, you, you'll like if you do render short show you're gonna get a double render error in uh, in your rails app so to, to, as, a, as a general rule and um, sometimes um, turbo streams and stuff like that will you'll vary from that if you want a special level of interactivity on your page but this general rule after you successfully complete a um, database transaction you're going to wind up redirecting rather than rendering and rendering is kind of your your else situation for if you've got an error so that being said and then that's kind of the um, the discussion we had is noted here in the uh, the rails guide so the um, next thing we're going to do is actually um, create our uh, new .html .erb. Um, as we've been doing we're going to uh, write the test for it first and then kind of uh, graduate through failures until we get to this point so um, we'll uh, go to our controller and I'm gonna I'm gonna insert this uh, this code before create so in, in both cases I'm gonna put new before create um, so I'll pause and uh, paste in my code for the test and then we'll talk through it so we've got the code pasted in here. Um, as you know, there, there's no parameter for the new article URL. So we're getting the new article URL, asserting that the response is successful. In the H1, we're going to have um, new article as the content. And then we're asserting that there is a form and that within that form, there are three div tags. Um, so that is the, um, level of uh, kind of basic testing that we'll do for this so we'll run our tests 
And we can see here that the action new could not be found on the articles controller. We'll go back up to our controller and implement that. So we're just taking, um, as noted before, uh, in instantiating a new article, assigning it to the article instance variable. And let's put this above create. We should now have a new error, missing template. We'll see that also if we go articles new. That's where we are in our uh, in our error journey on this. So now we're going to um, create a new.html.erb. which will now, similar to what we did before, this will um, return success, but not have anything in the, um, in the body. We'll still be failing our test because we're making assertions about the template. So I think we should graduate from error to failure now. And we have, so expecting at least one element matching H1 found zero. So now we're going to take a look at this uh, form builder. So the um, we've created the new.html.erb. We have not created the content for it. Let's take a look at this content. So um, the just the header tag, new article, and then in the you can see this uses the um, the erb. We're going to print this. So form with is a helper, and um, we can see uh, farther down. So that produces uh, writes HTML out to your um, section. So form will be action articles. That's what we're getting with model article. Um, and then we're, we're doing a Ruby block here. So do form. It's very common to see this just F. So um, article do F, F dot label, F dot text field. You can name this um, anything you wanted. You could have uh, with, with sauerkraut and then sauerkraut.label, sauerkraut.text field, as long as you're consistent with that block variable, it doesn't really matter what you um, do from a uh, computational standpoint. Obviously, you always want to have meaningful um, variables in your code just for the programmer happiness and the fact that somebody might have to maintain your code someday. But um, whatever you put here just needs to be echoed in this block. So um, we can see uh, f dot text field changes into an input type text. F dot text area changes into a text area with uh, the name and ID. The labels um, will will do, use whatever you've got. Uh, so rather than uh, hard coding that value, if you use the attribute. This will make use of Rails's uh, internationalization and translation. So if you had um, English and pirate or English and French or whatever, that somebody who's um, using that um, language parameter, they'll get whatever uh, translation you've got if you've got one for those uh, those values. So that again, the rail doing this the Rails way. Um, sets you up for making your application scalable and expansible to all these things. So we're going to take this now, paste it in to our new.html.erb and save it and see where that gets us in our tests. So we are now back to passing and if we go to um, new.html.erb will from the form this will not work so you can see now we have two articles that are called 
uh, stateless with the body of code. And that's because we have um, still our um, create action is using the hard coded article dot new title stateless body code. And we need to uh, change this so that it gets the, um, the um, information to create that new article from our form. So the, uh, the next part of this is using uh, strong parameters. So we're going to um, submit this data with, um, you can see here, article params. Uh, I'm going to try it first with just a params article and show you what happens. So we see, um, even if you don't uh, specify your uh, params, you're going to get a, a forbidden attribute error when you try to do this. So um, that's kind of how you can see uh, authenticity token is filtered. And then we've got the this article in the params, but we have not used strong params to allow that particular um, set of parameters to work. So we're going to go back before we do this and we're going to uh, fix our uh, controller test so that it matches what we expect to see. So I'm going to pause and modify the code here, the post articles URL part of this. All right, so I've modified the, um, the test here. I've also went and made the um, the string literal quotations, quote marks, double quotes to make it consistent with the rest of the uh, the rest of the file. So now we've got an article title that we're providing here, uh, an article body, and I made it specifically on purpose longer than uh, than a normal item there. So it's got over a thousand characters in it. The um, the assert difference article dot count. We're now doing a post to the article's URL with params. So you've got params as a hash, a Ruby hash, and then uh, kind of the top level of that is article, and then nested and is another hash with the, uh, the the attributes of the article itself. So title is our article title, body is our article body there, um, and then we're going to want to be redirected to the article path, assert that the title is equal to the title and the body is equal to the body and that our flash still works. This is going to fail again because we don't have the strong parameters in there yet. So um, you can see we're getting the, just like in the U, U, UI, the forbidden attributes error. So let's go back to the, um, to the example here and take the, um, at, we're going to add this article params private method to the articles controller. So all of your public methods are kind of accessible as um, controller actions, and we don't want that to be the case for this. So um, we've got our article params here, and it's doing params dot require, and then uh, so you need the article. Um, attribute there and then we're specifically permitting title and body uh, so you, you've got to allow each individual attribute that you want to from that and you want it if you wanted to have certain params that are only available via create you, you could do create param params and call that here and then have a separate one for update params where you're uh, allowing different uh, attributes on each case so there's nothing um, super magic about this. You could name uh, this uh, article params 
um, method again in just about anything you'd want uh, this uh, again is if you stick to the if you were to generate this uh, with all the the routes and stuff like that then this is the default that will be there and it makes for readable code so just do it uh, so now we save that and our test is back to passing so that means that in all likelihood if we go in and return to articles new did so we if we go and look at the output from the server here we can see started post for articles um, authenticity token is filtered out but we've got the article um, kind of parameters article um, you can see is a top level just like we did in our controller test and then that second level hash with title with what we had in our form the body with what we had in our text area. So the input, the text area, and then uh, this kind of comes as part of the form helper commit create article. Um, it starts the transaction. We successfully get that working and then commit the transaction. And then the, um, you can see um, article controller show, it's using a turbo stream uh, that's kind of out of the box rail seven interaction that's occurring there and then um, So it's redirected you can see two separate requests here the started post it succeeds We redirect to show with the article started get article seven and then uh, parameters ID and then it's rendering the um, the items that we have in our view for for that so the I think we're going to stop halfway here and maybe the, the second uh, part of this might be a little short, but um, this is already we're already at 27 minutes here. And so I want to try to keep these under a half hour if I can. So we'll we'll stop there. I, I will. Um, I'll commit in the next video so that we won't commit and push this video. We'll um, get through the rest of 7.3 in the next video and see you then. Actually hold that thought. I am going to commit my work. This is a committable working chunk of work. So uh, we'll take a look at what we've changed. So we've added our new create and um, article params here and then we've added tests for um, for new and show and then in addition we've added the uh, new.html.erb we'll write our commit message for this so we've got our commit message save it push to the repo and now we'll see you for real in the next video. Want to create your own Ruby gem but don't know where to start? Code along with me on the end-to-end -end journey of the Nerd Dice project. We'll configure and publish the gem, use GitHub Actions to trigger builds and tests, and create magic methods with Ruby metaprogramming that can roll any number of dice, all while using a test-driven approach. Go to statelesscode.com slash nerddicegem to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Code video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. Check out our growing library of videos on our social media channels. Follow us at Stateless Code and Taxation is Theft.